Welcome, readers. On this installment of Book Chat, joining me are my three book bloggers, one series read along co hosts, Casey and Nicola. We're discussing Poison Princess, the first book in the Arcana Chronicles by Cressley Cole. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Joining this book discussion by finding me on Twitter as well as my book blogger co host. Tweet at us using our special hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. That's using the numeric 3 and 1. Again, that's hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. If Twitter isn't your thing, no worries. You can join us in the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official and talk about the series with us there. I hope to hear your thoughts on this book discussion. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. Before we jump into the conversation, I have a quick note for you. I want you to get the full enjoyment out of this conversation, so I recommend that you read the book first. This is a roundtable book discussion, so of course, spoiler alert, you've been warned. Hey everybody, welcome back to another three book blogger, one series read along discussion. And today we are talking about the first book in the Arcana Chronicles by Cressley Cole. And that title is called The Poison Princess. Joining me as always are my two read along co-hosts and friends, Nicola and Casey. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Nicola, why don't you go first? Hey everybody, my name's Nicola and I've been blogging over at uh, alphaheroes.net since 2007. So I'm an old lady in the blogger world and uh, uh, this is one of my favorite series so I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. Alrighty, Casey. Hi everyone, I've been blogging at Literary Escapism since 2010. So I've been in the blog world for a while even though I'm still like new to it, not new, Um, young. I'm totally brain farting right now. I'm sorry. I'm also a at Heart Full of Ink and a huge fan of Presley Cole. Wonderful. Yay. So if you guys didn't know already, both of them have read some of this series already. I have not. I am brand spanking new to it. So we're going to have some interesting, I think, dynamic as far as, you know, those that already love the author and are familiar with the author versus me who it's you know totally new to so this should be fun Yay. and you haven't read her other series either have you tamara no uh, i haven't morals after dark <gasps> oh my god that series is so good but adult adult paranormal well and really long so we, we really don't long. <laughs> it's been yeah. going for a while so um so i think that's one of the reasons why we, we haven't brought it up for um as a candidate on the, on this, on this show. Cause it's just, I don't know how many they're up to now. I, I have, I have to admit, I'm not up to, I'm not caught up on that series. You know, for me, I love a good series. Y'all know I do, but sometimes when the series goes so long, I just get lost and I f- forget to go back. Like, you know, I haven't, I'm not up to date with the J.R. Ward series. I'm like two books behind now and I'm kind of like getting further and further behind. And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you know, six like years long. behind on J.R. Ward. Yeah. <laughs> it is and so I'm sad. not, guys, I'm not behind at all on J.R. Ward. You're not? <laughs> I'm not. Well, I never read The Angels, and I never read the, um, I read the first of the Bourbon books. I think there were three of those. Um, I didn't like the first one, so I didn't finish them. Um, but, yeah, I'm up to date on the Black Dagger guys. Oh, so. I need to catch up, but I did love the Fallen Angels. Uh, it was just a short little, uh, I don't know, five like books five, or something. Yeah, yeah I really okay. liked it. It was so dark, but okay, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but <I don't> know. <laughs> we need to get back to Poison Princess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's kick this thing off. Uh, first thing that I noticed, it was first person narration. Uh, I don't usually gravitate toward first person narration, but I thought she did a good job with it. Did you guys feel a way or like it or not like it? I love I don't person. mind it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say I love first person. And I don't mind third person. Like it all depends on the story and how well the author writes it. So that didn't bother me at all. I would agree with that. The fact that it's all in first person, except for the the bookends with the um, the extra character there that we'll get to in a minute, um, mm-hmm. 
I think the thing that it does is that when, when the character is confused about how other people feel, um, you're on that ride with them. I think this was, mm-hmm. this was common in some kind of the old school romances too. They were typically third person, but they'd be really deep in the heroine's point of view. And so you never really knew what the hero was thinking or what his motivations were. And I think that, um, because this is a YA and because there's a lot of, um, uh, tension back and forth with uh, with Jack. I think that that puts the reader right in that same roller coaster seat with the heroine with Evie. So I think it worked for the story. I think not only did it work, I think it made me even more frustrated with Evie than I would have been if it was written <laughs> a little differently. This girl just annoyed me so bad. I'm not going to lie about that. Like I wanted to like her. I feel like I do like her more after the end. I'm like, okay, maybe this could be something else. But that whole time I'm like, girl, you are so dumb. What is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and this is one of the reasons why I avoid YA in general. And and I guess I had a little bit of a a rosy colored glasses looking back on this because I did like the end and I did like further books on it. Uh, But Mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, 16 year old stuff in this book. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a whole lot of, you know, virginity talk and boyfriend, girlfriend talk and uh, does he like me? Why does he act this way? Uh, You know, that whole thing is like an undertone. It's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. And I still want a boyfriend to woo me before I lose my fairy. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, um, I could, I can understand her misgivings about, uh, in the, in the situation they're, they're in, if her misgivings were around, I don't want to get pregnant in this hellhole. Right. That's legit. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, everything else is kind of like, eh, I don't know. Um, but I don't know how it would feel to be 16 at the end of the world. That, that would have to be messed up. Right. I'd be bad enough at. Oh, yeah. 40. Yeah. I mean, it actually, they did kind of, or the author did address that. Like at, at one point, Evie and Jack were um, on this boat and they come across, I'm like, oh, they point out the condoms in there. I'm like, oh, is somebody going to take the condoms that are in the, the cupboard? <laughs> These because old we know condoms. <laughs> those old condoms, I guess some old condoms are better than none, but still, I'm like, oh, okay. Double up, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you know oh. wearing two condoms actually tears the condoms, making them both ineffective? I did not know that. I did not know that. No. Thank you for that PSA, Casey. There you go. Don't wear two <laughs> condoms. I had a oh, quality professor to teach me that. So mm. Yeah, I never learned that in health. People should have. Maybe there'd be less kids running around because people trying to double up and they're just going, oops, my bad. Making it worse. Make, making it worse. But yeah. Yep. So did you like Jack? You know, we talked a tad about Evie, but I want to talk about Jack because I feel like <laughs> he's an asshole. I mean, I don't like him at all. At all. Like, really? he is so young and he's got he's very snooty and judgmental and i mean he can't see anyone's point of view but his own there are so many things that i don't like about him i just don't even want her to end up with him wow is that like (laughs) an app i mean i I think i must be in the minority i think you probably are Uh, I liked him. I think he's, you know, he's troubled, obviously, but I think that mm-hmm. that we see enough of his backstory to understand why he's kind of up and down and has has these um, temper issues. I think the thing that's harder to understand is why he agrees to take care of Evie. Why? Why would he do that? I don't know. It's because he, he wants some. That's why. And he promised really. To yeah, I know. I don't know. I know, but look at look at what he gets himself into on her behalf. I know. I, and I understand he did have a okay. Just to address what you said, Nicola. Yes, he did have a rough life. He was not raised in the same way that Evie was. I get all of that, but that doesn't make him any more palatable to me. I still feel like yes, your experiences make you who you are, and that can make you somebody I don't like. Okay. So, <laughs> but not to say that he'll always be that way. Maybe he won't. But I mean, the pettiness, 
the it's just all of it like that whole thing that went down with old girl um i can't remember her name right now Selena? Selena, yes, you know, he's all acting because he didn't get what he wanted. Oh, I'm going to act like, you know, a spoiled brat and act like I'm not interested in you and me and this other chick are going to hook up. Like that, it's like mind games. Like you Mm -hmm. guys, it's more important things going on right now than to play those stupid games. I feel like a 16 year old may know that with the end of the world. I'm just saying. Maybe not. He's 18. Like, he's he's slightly older. Not that it excuses any of that, but. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. He plays lots of mind games. And I thought he might be bipolar because he gets so angry and beats people up and he like gets lost into that hatred and that violence and that's scary. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. Um that never occurred to me. I just thought he was, you know, he drinks a lot, so um um I don't know. I just thought it was not untypical of a of a 18 year old growing up in that situation and having that kind of pressure on him all the time. I mean, that should have lessened a bit after the apocalypse because there's yeah. literally no point. He brings up her richness and money and all this stuff, but it's the end of the fucking world. Nobody uses money anymore. You're all rich of if these you things have don't gas. matter. You're rich if you have food. Like, none of that matters. Yeah. Yeah, for someone so mature, you know, someone so mature and, you know, I'm above all of this, you know, rich, bratty stuff. You would think that, oh, my gosh, you know, and in some ways he does get it. I think he does understand that. But in other ways, he's holding on to that Mm -hmm. old way, like for dear life. And he uses that as an excuse to throw in her face at any chance he can get. That's what I feel like. Anytime something doesn't go his way, uh, you're like this. I'm like, oh, stop. Just stop. Shut up. Right. I can't. So I don't know. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> i mean i don't i don't i don't have i don't have that much problem with him but i mean yeah in, in that respect you know maybe i'll just go back to the old school a little bit you know i i grew up on 70s 80s romance and the hero act heroes act like that a lot so maybe i'm just uh more inoculated to the alpha hole than you guys are mm-hmm. i mean that's yeah which i have zero tolerance for yeah, no, it's still a very predominant character in today's romance and YA and new adult and everywhere. You see it everywhere and people just lap it up. And yeah, the first time I read this book back in 2012, I loved it. I loved Jack. He was my favorite. And now I'm like, I'm like you, Tamara. I'm like, you little bitch. Get over yeah. yourself. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't care and I mean, if you're honestly- bipolar or not. <laughs> I'm, I, I, even though it is pr- really common in these kind of books, even adult books, I still don't like it. Like I can think about mm-hmm. other instances where I've read books and the man acts like that and I hate them and it takes them like a whole book and a half to like start to come down to earth and act normal. But after that, after that adjustment, whatever it is that kind of says, well, they really don't need me or well, they are stronger than me or well, you know, whatever it is that kind of knocks them down a couple pegs that kind of normalizes them a little bit. That action usually <laughs> makes me like them more. It's like before that, I just can't. I cannot. I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. So I'm just going to put it. That yeah, there. I'm OK yeah. with Jack. And uh, I, th- I don't think the I, you know, I think. I'll be totally honest with you when I first read this book and I'll, when I first read it, I'm typically a character reader. I, if, if the plot can be thin, the things can be mediocre, but if I love the characters, I'm going to love the book. And mm-hmm. really for me, this book, this series is all about the story, the plot, the, the world building, the magic, the, um, and I just was so fascinated by the, um, the powers that the different characters were given that I was reading along to find out what was going to happen, what was going to happen next, what was going to happen next, what's going to happen next. So the character flaws didn't bother me as much in this book because I was just eating up the world building. And I, I like the world intense. building. Yeah, yeah, very good. I, I don't really have too much complaints about the world building itself. Um, I don't know. It's it's different. It's definitely unique with the whole tarot card thing. It's something that I've never read before, so I liked that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious to see 
you know, this burst of other powers that seems like Evie has at the end there. I'm really curious to see what she looks like at her strongest and when she knows everything she can do, what kind of, you know, yeah. princess <laughs> other than poison, right? I mean, she obviously can do other things as well, but you know, I don't know. I'm interested. I'm, I'm in it. I, I like the plot. I like the end of the world. I like the tarot. I like those things. So yeah. I th- I'm going to say I think they grow up a little bit, but then again, in, it, when I remembered this book, I didn't remember so much of the teenage angst that, as much as there actually was in the book. So um, I'm not going to make predictions on what you guys are going to think about future books, but um, uh, I just think this is a, a fascinating series, and the, the stories are super twisty, and the powers are really interesting, and the bad guys are really bad, I'll say that. If there's one thing I didn't like about the series is that some of it got really gory and gruesome, but... And I don't mind that. <laughs> All right. Then. I don't. You should be good. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind blood and gore. But I w- did yeah. want to say that I know this is the first book in a series, so I wasn't expecting a lot of character development for Evie or Jack. Like, this is very much, this is where they start out, this is who they are, and then they're going to change throughout the series. And that's what good series and good characters do, is they don't change immediately. They change throughout. So I am trying to be less critical of Evie and Jack because they are 16 and 18 at the end of the world and they're not going to change immediately in this first book. That being said, what the fuck did Evie and her mother do for a year in that house? If they weren't learning, if Evie wasn't learning how to shoot a gun. like Conserving their, I don't know. When did her mom get sick near the end of that time? Yeah. Yes, they'd been in there for almost a year, and she fell, like, a couple weeks before Jack showed up. Like, there have been several months where they they had stocked up on everything, and then they just kind of stayed in their house and didn't do anything. And Evie didn't learn anything. She didn't learn how to shoot a gun. She didn't learn how to hunt or how to make a bow and arrow or anything. And I'm like... You were there. She barricaded for- the house and yeah. shut off the downstairs entrances, and I don't know. That should have taken you like a week. And then what? Did you sit around just twiddling your thumbs? Like what? Girl. What was that? They didn't plan. An- I guess they didn't scavenge enough. I don't. You know, they ran out of stuff too fast. Um, they didn't think long game. I think they tried, but it just didn't. They failed. They really um, did. Yeah. Well, they survived for six, seven months, which is better than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we will finish the discussion of Poison Princess. We'll also give our individual ratings and we will give you the biggest plot hole. Stay with us. Are you looking for a history podcast to grab some quotes for a last minute paper? Or maybe your presentation on Jane Eyre needs a punch-up. Then do not listen to us. Do not. Like, we're begging of you. (laughs) I'm Ashley. And I'm Kelsey. And we host Make It Modern, a podcast where we talk about history, literature, and all things made before the year 2010 in a way that would probably be frowned upon by any teacher. We basically delve into the past and stumble into the present. We discuss things like what type of rosé is appropriate for a medieval execution, and how we've all been binglied one time or another. So if you love hearing about people, places, and things with so many issues they could be a Julia Michaels song, join us every Thursday on Spotify and iTunes. And be sure to follow us on Facebook at Make It Modern, and also on Twitter and Instagram at capital M-I-M underscore podcast. Are, are you ready to do a plot hole, Casey? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. First, <laughs> first I wanted... Before Jack showed up, Evie's mother was trying to whore her out to, like, the veterinarian down the road. Yeah. So what the fuck is wrong with Evie's mother? get her married off. <laughs> yeah. It's very old South, right? I guess. Well, I guess the mom's thinking there's not that many guys to pick from and, you know. Well, let's be real. Evie's not surviving on her own. And the mom knew she was dying. Yeah, I don't know. Her mom just really bothered me this time around. Her mom bothered me, but not because of that. Her mom bothered me because of... So, so the one the one plot hole... I was thinking about this, not because... Mm-hmm. 
Not because I normally do, but because I was ready to have that discussion with you guys. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think the, the one thing that I thought was, was sketchy was how many people actually survived if there really was almost no water. Mm, like um, how, how, I mean, I, the, the way they describe the, what happened to the water and like this big army that's rolling through with thousands of people, like I, I just had a hard time figuring out how they would find enough water so i guess the wells were still going on for a few months but but and then they but they keep finding water along the way somehow that seems um that's the one thing that that seems hard like when the way they set up the world building and then the way they keep surviving seems wrong yeah especially i mean it's not like they're finding um like a gold mine of water and they're just living off of that. They keep moving. So they don't know what they're going to find when they're going to find it. Right. If ever. So water and gas, people, water and gas, yeah. water and gas. But humans yeah. can't survive long without water. Exactly. Like it's two or three days. Mm-hmm. I think. I don't know. Somebody smarter than yep. me. Somebody was like right. That. So that's hmm. the one. If I had to call out a plot hole, that's the one I'd call. I think they should have been a, the setup should have been a little bit less drastic about the loss of water, but um, or more drastic about you know only groups of you know more than ten can't really. I don't know. It just seems wrong to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and- I mean I think everyone would die honestly. So no water, no fresh food, nothing will grow. Mm-hmm. the animals are dying i mean how do you yeah i mean a year into this thing everyone should be dead I, right right yeah oh yeah so i i think it, if they'd set up to be slightly less drastic you know like 90 percent of the of the surface was scorched but not 100 percent. you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, i mean there was still a my... point where they walked through mud in a swamp which was weird now that you say that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that too. Um, yeah. So that's my vote for a plot hole. I think she just put that out there because she wanted to introduce a way for Evie to farm with her blood. So if there's no water, Oh, guess what? You have blood to farm with. Congrats. You know, kind of like, <laughs> I feel like that might've been, you know, part of the reason for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, because Evie becomes a lot more valuable at that point. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Although she hasn't really used it yet in this book. Not yet. Well, but... she, she did at first, but she hit it. Well, she didn't use it a lot after that initial time where she figured out she could do it. She's still keeping it a secret from everybody. Yeah. Nobody knows except maybe, maybe the tarot who know her powers might know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did tell hmm. Jack she can make more plants, but she didn't tell him how. Yes. Yeah, right and that there. was part of what she was using to kind of bribe him <laughs> yep. to take, you know, to make him help her get to her grandmother. She's like, I'll tell you anything you want to know right after <laughs> you yep. help me get where uh, I need to go. Yep. Which was pretty smart. Because I could see mm-hmm. anybody with any common sense would find some good fortress place and buckle down and and stay in place right so Mm -hmm. traveling around seems um more risky but in that same respect i kind of i hope her grandmother is alive because it does sound stupid to assume she's alive um or to hope she's alive it does sound really dumb like just we just talking about how severe everything is i (laughs) what is the likelihood that this older woman is alive yeah, who's in a who's in a mental right. institution? <laughs> yeah, on an island. I mean, anything is possible. I mean, it's possible she could still be alive, but that's a huge undertaking and risk on a maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, the stakes are high for Evie because she doesn't know anything. <laughs> you know, she's starting to learn. She's I... well, kind of. Go ahead, Casey. I don't know why Evie's mom didn't get any powers. Because her grandma had it, and then her great-grandmother had it, too. So it sounded like every woman in this family line had it, except for Evie's mom. So I don't think that the Terrasova is a power. It's knowledge, right? 
Okay. They, they chronicle. They don't have powers. And there was a point where um, Evie's mom said that she just refused to listen and she wouldn't have anything to do with any of it. Okay. So she just Rejected. was supposed to possibly just chronicle it instead of actually right. being one of the people on the tarot cards. Right. Now, it implies that the grandmother knew that Evie was actually going to be the one. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. I don't know how they know that or if they really do or and they all just assume that the next generation might be, you know, or maybe she saw something that Evie could do when she was little. I, I, I don't know. So those are questions that I have that are not super important. But um, but, you know, do the chronicles do the chroniclers actually know when which generation is going to have to, you know, be on the line or not? So. But I mean, not only that, but for example, you only have this deck of tarot cards. And do you have one from every generation? Do you have to wait till one dies and then another one takes the, the role? Like, how does that all work? And maybe if her grandmother is alive, maybe she'll disclose all of that to us. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, you'll find out more about that as the as you meet more characters. Um, and some of them have chroniclers in their family and some of them don't. So Okay. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Well, I have two plot holes that I want to talk about. Okay. So the first one is Arthur. And I, throughout this whole book, it has been very, very stressed that the women are dying and that there yep. are not a lot of women. They're just, they're dying for some reason, no explanation given. Although now all the men are going crazy because there are no women to corral them or whatever jack said but there are a lot of women and yet somehow arthur finds four single females who just come into his house and he kills them they're just alone uh yeah it doesn't really say how he gets them or who was with them at the time um, and this is like his fifth or sixth house, so he's done this multiple times throughout. Is he the reason why all the women are dying, or I don't know? That just well, doesn't explain it all. I I don't think he could have killed all those women, um, even though he's like a serial killer. I don't think he's killed like <laughs> that many Population. women. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's crazy but though. I don't understand crazy. how he kept getting all these single women, like. All these other men are like, no, I'm going to take this one woman and share her with thousands of other men. And we're going to keep her locked up and caged away and quote unquote safe. Which uh-huh. is just, ugh. But then he <laughs> ends up with four girls locked in his basement. I don't understand. Like, okay, so first off, he seems like a creep. He seems creepy. I don't even know how he even lured those women in, maybe with food or water. Um, but then tell me your story. So he probably did that to all the women mm-hmm. found, you know, what were you doing before the flash or whatever? But at that point, I don't know. It just <clears throat> seems weird. It does. Seem yeah, odd. It, was, it was weird and wasn't really explained. And I know there wasn't really time to go into his story, but it left this plot hole of like, there are not a lot of women. So how are you finding them? Why are you killing them? What's going on? What is this? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That just that didn't really bother me. Um, I don't know why. It just it didn't strike <laughs> me as a big, huge issue. Yeah, I mean, but I kind of do wonder that now. Now that you mention it, like, mm-hmm. yeah, what what was the end game? What were you doing anyway? Like, <laughs> it would have been what? just as easy to to have boys. Well, he was he was um, experimenting for his elixirs. Hmm. Yeah, it would have been just as easy to have done that on anyone. He's just sick in the head and he liked torturing women. That's what it was. Well, yeah. How did he find them? They kept stressing that there were no women and that, like, they hadn't seen women for months before they saw Evie. Like, they're so scared. He had them for months before they got scarce. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, technically, he probably could have been kidnapping and killing people before the apocalypse. So Probably, yeah. But anyway, okay, moving on to my second plot hole. You guys are going to laugh at me for this. <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready to We're laugh? Ready. Oh. I'm ready. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so when Evie, it's that 
vision or like call for help from Matthew. Mm -hmm. And he's drowning in his basement. Mm -hmm. I want to know how the fuck she went from Mississippi to Alabama in less than a day. Yeah, that was a little... uh, Yeah. Because there's more. (laughs) Earlier, when she was driving with Jack, she specifically said that they were maybe driving like 20 miles a day. Maybe 20 miles a day. That's That's not very far. And I I went to Google and I (laughs) (laughs) I did the Huntsville, Mm -hmm. Huntsville, Alabama to Mississippi and Google said it was like 280 to 300 miles. Mm. And they don't say where in Mississippi they are. She just says he's in the next state over and north. So I don't know if it's less than that. But still, if they're only going like 20 miles a day, you wouldn't get there in less than a day. And he already, he told her that the water had been pouring out for like hours already. Two hours, I believe. I wrote it down here. Yeah. So how the fuck did this happen? Yeah. I, yeah. I did think it was odd they got there so fast. I did. But I kind of just tried to suspend disbelief and just rolled with it. Yeah, but I did notice that. I'm like, yeah, that was fast there. So, And also it seemed seemed hard for me to... I, like, how would she actually find that house, you know? Yeah. It was like, he was pretty vague about where he lived, you know? She's like, I live in a rocket. She didn't give him much to, he didn't give her much to go on. Mm-mm. And not only that, at the beginning of that whole, I've got to get out of here, I've got to go help Matthew, you know, she's walking around the subdivision <laughs> in the don't know which direction she's walking. It's like, you're just wasting time having this dumb conversation. I'm like, I don't... Yeah. I Okay. Yeah. That, <laughs> just, whole, okay. that whole day, that whole scene, that whole everything. <laughs> no, I went to Google and I was all like, how long does it take you to get from Mississippi to Huntsville, Alabama? And Google's like, it's 300 miles. And I'm like... I don't think they could do that in a day. That's a lot of days. <laughs> 20 yeah. miles a day. Well, maybe in the Ducati they can go faster. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I feel but they have more worse than that because... with the sandstorm. Yeah. <laughs> and what's her face was with them too, you Selena. know? Selena, yeah. Um, Selena. Why do I keep forgetting her name? I don't know why. The Luna, the moon, the bringer of doubt. Yes. Yeah, she does, too. She does a good job of that. I'm like, ooh, Shady Grady. Mm, Don't trust that girl. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Yeah, well, I I agree with both of those plot holes, Casey. Those were good, (laughs) obvious, good ones that you caught. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep, those are definitely... I'm Googling and going, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me ask you guys. Did you... Okay, so when you started the book, and well, for me as the first timer, I was mm-hmm. so interested into this whole serial killer type thing. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't expect to not see anything about that again until the very end. I was kind of like, um, I kept waiting for something that never happened. And I just feel like that hook at the beginning was just a lot and then just not to see or hear anything about it again until the very very end i was kind of disappointed by that i feel like i wanted more of that instead of more of they made a pretty good climax like, all that time in her high school before the flash i don't know yeah maybe it's just me no i, I agree was... with you go ahead casey it was, a, it was a good and creepy hook and i expected a lot more about it and there was like a tiny little chapter from his point of view in the middle of the book. But yeah, you didn't really see anything until the very end. And it was. I lost well, my here's, here's, here's my thing. I freaking hate serial killer books. <laughs> hate them. And when I picked this up, I was not expecting it. And when it went into this point of view and all this gruesome stuff he was doing, I was like, oh, no. So when it, like, jumped out of that, I was very happy. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> but I can see why if you liked that at the beginning, if that was the hook that drew you in, that it would be a little disorienting. So I will both yeah. agree and disagree with you, Tamara. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't. Okay, now I don't necessarily love serial killers, but I do love a good psychological thriller or thriller in general. So mm-hmm. when you throw that at me, I'm like, well, this sounds crazy. Okay, so what's going to happen next? And then we're like, oh, the high school bell's ringing, back to school. I'm like, what? Okay, okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, you know, but I did like that part of it. I felt like it had an older tone. It felt like I was going to get some really juicy, traumatizing um dark story and i felt like it was dark light or you I think, know it wasn't i think that was yeah. the point because old evie the evie who was evie in high school before the flash and everything and even after the flash living with her mom she would have curled up and died and just accepted his torture and just like not fought back at all but the new Evie, the poison princess that she's becoming, the empress, is like, fuck no. I've been through all of this. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to rip you in half with these plants because I'm powerful as fuck now. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was... Like I the, love that Evie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the whole point I do. Of Bring on the, the red killer. witch, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you see... I. Her struggle with the, the her fear of becoming an evil becoming evil is interesting to me. Like I like that plot line as much as I like everything else. So, um, like the the romance, you know, I don't usually say this, but the romance is okay. But I I could do without the romance in in this series. I could really like the whole struggle of making allies and figuring out how to win this game is really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And the way the rules are set up, you know, is contrary to, I don't know, everything that Evie wants. Right. So it's, it's really interesting. It's going to, and I still don't know. I haven't read, I've read all the books, but the last one. So the last one is, I think there might be one, there's one due out this summer, I think, or the spring. The final book. Yeah. Yeah. The final book is due out this spring, and I haven't read that. And it doesn't, it seems like it's going to be hard to resolve in one book. So I'm really interested to see how she wraps it all up and try not to give any spoilers away for either of you guys. But, um, you know, there's 22 major arcana in the 22 or 24 in the tarot deck. So in theory, somebody has to kill off, you know, 23 characters in order to win. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Evie doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to kill. She, she, you have to make, it's, it's very much like sur- the survivor TV series. You have to make allies to get through the early part of the game. And then if you want to win, you have to get rid of your allies and be the last one standing. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really hard for Evie to contemplate. And she really in, in, I don't, I'm verging on spoilers here. So I'm going to stop talking, but, um, I like that part of the story is that inter- that struggle that Evie has about being evil versus being good. Yeah, I like that struggle as well. Yeah. I f- that's interesting to me and I don't I am of the school where if you turn evil that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially <laughs> I just I am. I just feel like she's not going to just in her mind I feel like the red which is evil but i think maybe it's her fear of what that is and maybe mm-hmm. it's really not that bad you know it's like you've blown it up in your mind and oh you've made it like this big scary thing and when it comes down to it it's just you knowing how to control it kind yeah. of thing oh, so yeah. in my well, mind that's how I are pretty evil you know I mean, wasting entire villages are, she but, you know, killed those people on the boat because they tried to burn her at the stake Yes, she didn't that's cut true. Them out, like because she's like, "Oh, you're wearing blue today, and I hate the color blue, so I'm just going to kill you all and torture you." No, like they tried to, they tied her to the stake and set her on fire. So she's like, "No, I'm not going to let you kill me. I'm going to kill you for trying to kill me." So mm-hmm. It's not necessarily evil. It's just like, no, it's it, self-preservation, it's self- dude. Exactly. I'm not exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm totally down with that. <laughs> but yeah, you I am too. I'm like, 
you know, sometimes you have to do bad things to save yourself. And mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to just lay down and just let somebody kill you? Nobody. I Nobody. mean, I'm well, sensing I would. a theme with you, um, Tamara, between this book and the last <laughs> one. <laughs> you know what? When I kill that people have Barkley. said, <laughs> you know what? I, I am. I'm like this. Okay. I feel like I am a realist. That is what I would classify myself as. So I'm definitely nobody's Pollyanna, although I can root for other people, but I like to see things as they are without rose colored glasses. Mm -hmm. So if that means I need to kill a couple people to stay alive, I'm going to kill a couple (laughs) people to stay alive. I'm sorry. Right. I, I took no pleasure out of killing people. It's not something I'd want I'm to do. I'm going to pick you for my survivor if, team, Tamara. Yeah. Yes. I mean, honestly, if it, if it, when the apocalypse comes, I will be left standing. It will be me. <laughs> Please Good let me be know. on your team, too. <laughs> Three bloggers, yeah. one series, taking on the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i did read one post-apocalyptic series where one of the people that did well in the immediate aftermath there was a group of them going okay what do we do next and one guy was like well i've read a lot of books about the apocalypse and the first thing you have to worry about is food <laughs> and I, was like, I mean yeah, yeah. that checks out <laughs> <laughs> food and food and weapons food and weapons yep. food mm-hmm. and weapons to defend the food yep Exactly. See, that's all good. See, that's why Evie should just roll with it. Like, I feel like she should embrace the, her powers. She she should try to learn as much as she can. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, obviously, don't be so damn naive. Just don't believe anything anybody tells you. Like, I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel like she, early on, she shouldn't have been able to just take Matthew's word for things. I mean, he was being very cryptic at times. Mm-hmm. And well, I don't think just she stop did. Being she so thought they were all just weird nightmares. Well, and when she started meeting people, like when she met Selena or whatever, she's like, wait, I, <laughs> I feel like I, I've seen her. You know, things are starting to click into place. Yeah. Just don't, I feel like she should, I would love to see her as a character be more uh what's the word i'm looking for skeptical like, learning well not only be skeptical of what people are telling you but have faith in your own ability to to see what's best for you or you know to have some kind of just like don't just be so wa- wishy-washy like even if you choose something and it ends up being wrong at least you chose something yeah don't just like me along for the ride that's crazy she's kind of passive through a lot of this book oh yeah. yeah i don't i want her to grow into somebody that knows her stuff and maybe like i said you don't always make the right choice and that's fine you know we all don't always make the right choice but you have to make one mm-hmm. well i think that's what the final scene was all about really <clears throat> yeah so it might might have took too long to get there to suit you but um but yeah yeah, I love the last part. I'm like, yeah, you better do it. Get it, girl. Take care of your business. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't let that guy get you. You better take him down. I'm sorry. You got to use all, everything in your toolbox. Okay, let's not play. You got all these skills. Use them. I just, I really and love she that scene where where she was like, he thought you could poison <laughs> me. <laughs> mm-hmm. so with a plant-based poison. Try again. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I just yeah. I really liked how she got the drop on him and uh and he, he rallied a little bit there but uh, not enough and um Mm-mm. you know she was just ahead of him every step of the way and I mm-hmm. really liked that. Yeah, me too. She was on her toes, she was using her brain, she was using her skills, she wasn't fearful. I mean, and even if she was, she didn't show it to him, right? That's yeah. the most important part. Yep. Internally, we as the reader, we can see all the plethora of feelings she's going through. I don't mind that. But mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, please just don't be that weak person that just crumbles. Like, don't do it. And she delivered it in the end there. I'm like, yes, I like where she's going mm-hmm. yeah. as a character now. So I'm happy. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with that at the end. Do you think she's going to drop Jack as her anchor to humanity? No, probably not for a while, if I had to guess. Not for a while. You know, Jack does like her. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, but he he's, did, and he pre- freaked out pretty hard. Yeah. When he saw her with her vines and stuff. 
making a sign of the cross and scrambling backwards. And... Again, he's so judgmental. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Go somewhere. <laughs> Sit the fuck down. I'm sorry. Stop it. <laughs> She's going to be saving your butt. And then you're going to be like, okay, maybe I was a little harsh. You know, <laughs> you're more strength. You're more powerful than anyone I know. And yes, you know, I'm sorry. Yes, That's queen. what's going to happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I, he's very like like that, and I'm like, ugh, Jack, you need to be knocked down a couple, and he will be. Watch, he will be. He better be. Well, I think it's interesting that he quiets the voices when she's around him. She doesn't hear the the other Arcana as loudly. I'm looking the second book. I'm and I I, I got to say I don't remember exactly what happens in every book. I kind of remember overall what the series what happens in the series, but. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as we move on, I think the interesting thing that happened in the last quarter of this book was, you know, meeting up with <clears throat> Selena and um, a Matthew, right? So now they've got three yeah. Arcana in one place, and they've killed a fourth one. And um, she doesn't trust Selena at all. Matthew is so cryptic, she never knows exactly. It's not that she doesn't trust him, it's that she doesn't understand him most of the time. Um, and she doesn't know if what she's seeing when she's, when he's telling her stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, and if you caught, if you caught it in this last big scene where Jack is freaking out, um, she hears death's voice in her head. Oh yeah. Uh And he says, but I'm very proud of you. Um, I feel like, but, um, you know, that's a little, um, that's a bit of foreshadowing there. I'll, I'll I'll let you know that. You know what that reminds me of? The darkling. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Kinda. Yeah, a little bit. But they can all do that. They can all talk, hear mm-hmm. each other if if they're paying attention or you know under certain circumstances. So, um, so the call signs are interesting. Speaking uh, of the Grisha, this is totally random, and I just had the spot. Um, Jack kind of reminds me of Mal. Because Mal could hunt anything and always knew, like, where stuff was going to be. And Jack Mm -hmm. is like, I know this boat's going to be safe for us. I know this town is going to have gas for us. I know I'm always safe here and I can hunt and I know when things are coming and all that stuff. And I was like, he reminded me of Mal. So I had that thought of maybe he's not. Yeah, and he doesn't doesn't have the powers. He doesn't have the powers, Mm -hmm. but that's some kind of power. So is there some other paranormal stuff going on? That's a good question. I have no idea. Yeah, there's going to be some kind of link between them reveals or some purpose of him. Yeah. Definitely. But who knows if they'll actually end up together in the end kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm still clueless how this is all going to be resolved. I've got to tell you. So I'm curious, did you, either of you know anything about tarot cards or the major arcana? Did you guys know anything about that before reading this series? Not enough to help. <laughs> I've had, I've had my, I've had the cards read for me a couple times, but, um, but that's it. I had it done at, at Casey's uh, um, conference last time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've had my cards read a few times, and I have a deck somewhere, but what I know about it is not matched up, has not matched up to this at all, so I'm just kind of rolling with it. Okay, well, I don't know anything either, and I can't help but wonder if I knew, because like, I didn't even know how many tarot cards there were. I looked it um, up. <laughs> but if I, I, if I knew something, maybe it would help me settle in a little quicker, but I'm like, forget it, I'm not going to research that, it's fine. Yeah, I think this is kind of a world within a world. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do think like she took it and just ran with it in her own way. Presley Cole, I mean, yeah, I don't think she's actually following any sort of like. I don't want to say well, the arrow stuff, but yeah, I mean, I think the characters line up right. There is an mm-hmm. empress. There is a fool. There is death. There is um, an archer. There, I, I, I think, but. Um, there's, I think that the, the, the characters match up, but their powers, I think she's taken a lot of liberties with. Like when you do a reading, the Empress is about um, new beginnings. Like I had mine read when I was pregnant and she drew the Empress card for me. And that was 
<laughs> that was interesting <laughs> because that's part of her thing. Part of the Empress's thing um, is fertility. And, um, but it wasn't Maybe about Evie plants. Maybe shouldn't have sex then. Yeah. It wasn't about <laughs> plants specifically. It was, you know, just general fertility and um, plenty and new beginnings. Um, so in, in, I guess it is kind of the opposite of death and death is not always about somebody dying. It's about, um, endings. Uh, things, yeah, endings, things coming to an end. And, um, um, so that's, that's pretty much the extent of, of my ability to talk about tarot cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, the fact that you said that, that makes me feel even more. Um, I guess secure in my thought that, you know, there could be double meanings here. And the fact that Evie is just so fearful of becoming so evil in the whole Red Witch thing. I feel like she's just taking that all out of context because of her fear. Mm -hmm. That's like in my instinct. I feel like it's not what she thinks it is. Like, yeah, it might be bad, but not that bad. You know, I just. Yeah. And I I, ah, I can't wait till she learns more. <laughs> I think, um, you know, in a lot of ways, this this particular book is a is a coming of age story right where evie really embraces her powers and we don't see much of that because it doesn't happen till the very end but i think um you'll like the ongoing series if that's been your the thing that was driving you crazy because mm -hmm. she does start figuring out what she can do and how she can use her powers to help her friends and help herself yeah She's going to be very powerful. I can tell she's, I like, I feel like I'm going to like her in the end. I feel like I'm really going to like her mm -hmm. um, when it's all said and done. I just feel it in my bones. <laughs> and I, I kind of feel like I wish Jackson would just disappear, um, <laughs> but he might be better. He might, he might turn the corner and I might like him because I felt that way about other male characters where I really disliked them on the onset. And then later I'm like, Oh, they're the best thing ever. <laughs> so it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> Fingers crossed it does get better. Because, yeah, I, I yeah, want him I, to grow as a person. And not just be yeah. so angry all the time. Yeah, and I think it's going to be interesting as this group of them grows. I feel like it will. They're probably going to meet more and more people of the cards. Mm -hmm. And, like Nicola was saying, you know, they're going to make alliances, even if they're temporary ones. So... That's going to be interesting as well, seeing all these different people come together and who knows who they are and who doesn't know and all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I wish they would tell Jack what's going on. That's what, and I guess they probably will have to in the next book. Yeah, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't get. I don't get Matthew's insistence that they have to keep it a secret because that doesn't make any sense and it doesn't help anybody. Yeah, it's not like he can go to the paper and tell everyone. <laughs> right, and, and he's keeping them all alive, let's be real. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, Selena maybe Selena, Selena, Selena can be on her own. That's good. That's fine. But um, Evie and, and uh, Matthew, they'd be dead. Yeah. Yeah, they need Jack. He is the person that will get take care of things so they can live i mean they just they don't have it right now they don't have it together and i don't know if matthew ever will i feel like he's definitely going to be one to die later he's not going to make it <laughs> just gotta be, not gonna make it he's definitely a, a a strange character and he's hard to understand so mm -hmm. And I know the, the and I think he had doesn't he have like some kind of autism or something yeah. or is that just him being quirky and he's just weird? I, that's he Evie's interpretation. Yeah, bracelet. But oh, he I, has it on his bracelet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. I wonder though if you know because Evie was put away in a mental institution, right? And so was the alchemist. Yeah. And I wonder if he's really autistic or if it was just the things that his powers do to him that um, made him seem made him seem that way. Um, yeah you know, difficult to manage as a, as a, for his parents. So, and there was a point where he was showing Evie something that was happening somewhere else. And she's like, how do you keep track of what's real and what's what, what, which reality you're in? He's like 50, 50. <laughs> so yeah. he's, he struggles to keep it together mentally, you know? Yeah. Yes, and while you're not keeping it together mentally, someone can sneak up on you and take That's you out right. while you're some. That's right. Doing something else. Unless he sees you coming, so, because he's those can yeah. he's got premonitions. 
So mm -hmm. I don't know. And there's some kind of thing going on between him and death that was mysterious too. Right. He says, I'm in death's pocket and he's in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, showed hmm. Evie death fighting and death was like, well, now you have to show me her. Uh huh. So, yeah. uh, anyway, death is super powerful. So, um, He's been around for 21 centuries. Yep. So, so he must have won every round today. Well, he won. Yeah. He won the last or the last couple, I guess, because I think they they implied that the um, the bubonic plague in Europe was uh, the last game. Mm. Maybe that's in a later book. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. As I said, don't remember that. I just remember that it said it's yeah, happened before, and if you win, you live. And he's been alive for. 21 centuries yeah there's a long time between games and he definitely won the last one and possibly the last couple but he doesn't necessarily that doesn't mean he won he's won all of them so far it just means he won the last one okay mm -hmm. so does the same well wow. i guess we'll learn this in the future books but does the same kind of like apocalypse happen every time that this game starts do you want me to tell you the answer no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I can answer that. Talking. I feel like I'm asking to? this question, but I don't really want the answer. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just gonna ask. Right. Gonna you will find out in the course of the books. How's that? Okay, I figured. Yeah. Okay. I know the Earth has had water since or before this game, and the last time she killed those people on a boat, there was water everywhere, and now there's like no water. So, mm. yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay, so Nicola, what didn't you like about the book? Did you, was there anything you didn't like second time around? Um, like specifically, second time around, I would have to agree with you guys that there was a little bit more teenage angst than I was expecting, especially in the pre-flash lead up and all the high school riding in the car and going to classes and getting paired up with somebody you didn't like and uh, going to a party and I don't know. I just I I wasn't. I was skimming that a little bit. <laughs> I wasn't, mm -hmm. but I wanted to. Um, so that mm -hmm. part was a little bit slow for me. I really wanted to get back into the, what seems like the real story, the stuff that happens after the flash. Mm -hmm. So, so second time around, yeah, that whole yeah, maybe, maybe more teenagery than I remembered. Yeah, it was a lot teenagery. And then, Things got a little better after the flash, but it was still pretty teenagery to me. <laughs> um, it was until the end. The boyfriend angst is is yeah. There's there's plenty of that. Yeah, if that's what you mm -hmm. like, you're gonna love this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a heavy romance undertone here, even though it doesn't really pan out for them in this book, which is fine. I'm okay right. with that. Drag it on. The series has a has. Um, some romance elements, but it's not the center of the story of, of the of the series, mm -hmm. I guess. But for the most part, I, I was I just I just fell in love with this world building. So, like I was telling you earlier, I when I finished the book, I wanted to jump right into the second mm -hmm. one. I wanted to continue since I was on you know I was on the train already. I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. Um, so that was a good thing that I didn't put it down and go meh eh. right, <laughs> okay. right so that's a good thing that i wanted to continue right away but i don't know i just didn't fall in love with it not yet not yet okay. jury's still out okay think there are any other topics we need to cover um as far as the characters or the plot or just plot holes <laughs> or anything you I, else you guys want to cover i covered everything <laughs> i have questions what? you only had those <laughs> I mean, I, you didn't have a laundry list <laughs> I mean, I could take out the book and flip through it and find more plot holes, but those were yeah. the two biggest ones. And like, I actually had to Google. Yeah, <laughs> Cole's pretty one. is pretty experienced with world building, so I, I would be mm -hmm. like I say, I, and I don't know if the water thing really is a plot hole. It's just it's questionable to me, you know. Yeah, but, and same with the women. Like it, it's questionable. Like, why are you stressing that there's no women? But then here, four single women trapped in this basement. They might have been there for a long time, though. I think you only yeah, had enough. one for a month before she died. I don't well, know. The she other didn't ones. Yeah. a lot of time to talk about himself. 
Which is is just as well, if you ask me. We could have learned more. Yeah, I had I had just as much of the alchemist as as I had, I had plenty of that. So, <laughs> well, he's gone Yay. now. Don't worry about him. Yay. He's gone. <laughs> Powers used for good. I'm sure there's some other really bad ones in the deck. There's got to be. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> but uh but yeah and i think matthew talks about the bad cards sometimes you know so those twins we don't know anything about those twins yet except they're fucked up yeah so <laughs> that was something that i didn't remember from the from the when i read it the first time through but that army that rolls through at the very beginning the reason they had to to take off from from evie's home in the first place mm-hmm. yeah we're going to see them again the oh reason yeah, that I assume sure. we're not going to yeah. see the end of them. The reason that Clotilde committed suicide. So, so yeah, we'll see them again. People crazy, you know. People lose their minds in the apocalypse. That happens. Yes, yeah. they do. Except me, <laughs> I'll be all right. You're going to be solid. <laughs> you know. Good yeah. to know. If I can get to Michigan <laughs> after the apocalypse. Hey, I got a game plan. I got a plan. <laughs> We should. Those who failed the plan, you know what yeah. they say. So, are you guys preppers? Are you a prepper, Tamara? No, uh, I don't have stuff like that. But guess what? I've already thought of it. So, let one thing happen, and I will be. Yeah. So, um, I have. And we live, um, you know, on the, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we have Mount Rainier, which is um, uh, a volcano, an active volcano. So. Um, I'm not in the flow zone for that, but if it goes, it'll screw up um, supply chain for a while. And um, so I have thought about it, and I have not put in these supplies, but I've talked to my family about it, and we have we're thinking about it. So the thing that I am stuck on is whether I want to have firearms in the house. So that's uh, mm-hmm. I do not at this point in time, and um, it's a uh, it's a consideration, you know. So haven't. Mm-hmm. I haven't made that jump yet, but that would be a big, a big change in um, my outlook, I guess, on how bad things are. <laughs> and I've thought about it um, in the last couple of years, you know, like, is it going to come? Yeah. Is it going to come to uh, fighting in the streets? I don't know. Oh, my God. If you get guns, make sure you learn how to shoot them. Uh, yeah, I actually have shot guns before. My dad is, okay. uh, is big into target shooting, and um, I've shot shotguns and rifles and handguns and i'm not terrible but um yeah, don't be evie. but i don't own any huh i said just don't be evie yeah <laughs> knock myself out <laughs> yeah no right no um it, the thing in in an apocalyptic situation is going to be ammo right so mm-hmm. well good thing for me because i live in michigan and i live in the northern suburbs there are so many people out here that like to go up north to hunt there are so many, um, what do you call them? Like the resale shops yeah, and pawn stuff. Shops. Like the pawn shops. I can just, go, I'll bust in all <laughs> those and just, I mean, everybody else will be too, but I have a few right by my house I can run to real fast. Yeah. You go split cocker, just grab it all. Yeah, but they won't have ammo. <laughs> they might. Yeah. They might. Yeah. Need they a good might. machete. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yes. some, I, I am good. about that. And some uh, upper body yeah. strength. So. <laughs> hey, I'm working on it. I'm in the gym. I'm working on it. Yes. <laughs> I figure in a real apocalypse, I'm probably uh, food, honestly. But um, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to lay in some food supply and just uh, not be completely unprepared. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't deal with a flash. I- wouldn't work for me because I'm counting on uh, my plan that I have not executed is uh, I've got a Creek in my backyard, so I'd have a water source, but I would need a purification setup. So I don't necessarily want to have a bunch of gallon drum, you know, 55 gallon drums of water, which you can get because I started researching some of this stuff (laughs) of drinking water that's sealed up and got a preservative in it. But um, I probably wouldn't do that, but I might uh, lay in a pump and uh, some uh, sterilization tablets. Well, don't forget all of the traps and alarms and mm-hmm. stuff you'll need to make sure you know when people yeah, are coming the for your water. The yeah. early warning. What is it called? The the perimeter early warning. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Is there a system at the end? P-E-W-S? Q-E-W-S? No. Pew, 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 pew. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Early warning system. P-E-W-S. Well, looks like you might be alive after all, but <laughs> I feel maybe. so unprepared now. I have it, no it plan. Depends, it depends on the nature it. of the apocalypse, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's a zombie apocalypse, I don't know. Um, but speaking of zombies, like I thought it was kind of weird in this book that they had the those what do you call those zombie things? Oh yeah, yeah, the magmen. Yeah, they're gross. That was gross. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, this is where you pull out your knowledge of The Walking Dead and start slicing and dicing. <laughs> I would really yeah. like to just read one post-apocalyptic series that doesn't have any freaking zombies, please, <laughs> please. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I mean, and they could have done it without yeah. it. I mean, honestly, we could, it could have been just fine without them. Yeah, the them. creepy humans are bad enough, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you got to deal with those things. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, is that it should we rate this thing should we rate it i think we're ready to rate it yeah all right so who wants to go first i can go first i think if you had asked me before the reread i would have said a five for sure i think the series is a five for me but i'm going to give this book a four because i think the beginning was a little bit slow okay so the first time i read this book was in 2012 when it just came out and i absolutely loved it it was five stars hands down Love, loved, loved it. Rereading it now in 2019, I've changed as a person and a reader, and now I'm an editor, and I'm like, yeah, it's slow, there are plot holes, there are just issues and character things that I don't like, but the world building is still really solid, it still captivates me as I read it, so it's a four stars now. I'm hoping that it gets okay. better, these things that I don't like. Well, I think that um, I'm going to go with a three uh, only because, you know, it was a slow start. I didn't like all the teenage angstiness going on. I hated Jack for the most part. (laughs) Um, There was a lot of things that just I didn't love about the book, but there were some things that I really liked. And I feel hopeful Mm -hmm. that what I expect and hope to experience will still happen so we're gonna go with a three a three with hope and with a positive (laughs) yes with a positive tick on the end so a three with a positive you know and uh yeah we'll see how the second book goes cool cool all right so the second book is uh endless night and both of you guys read that as well right so all right so that was a 2013 release uh, we shall see what happens next with Evie, Jack, and the gang, and who the next villain is. I'm curious to see who that is. I haven't even read the synopsis <laughs> yet. I'm just just going to start. Yeah, just yeah, the whole series kind of blurs for me, so I'd have to kind of look and see what what happens in this one. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's kind of the fun part about reading a series or being committed to reading the series. It doesn't even matter anymore what the synopsis mm-hmm. says because you're going to read it. Yeah. So let's just <laughs> jump into it and just see you find is <laughs> like you know i don't need to know what's going to happen before i start the book I'll for- it is sort itself out <laughs> all right guys i guess we are done for today thanks so much for listening to us ramble about poison princess and of course please hit us up online join the facebook group or you know find us on twitter using the hashtag three bloggers one series and let us know what you thought of poison princess and also let us know if this was your first time reading it or if it was a reread for you i'd like to know that as well yay yep yep all right guys thanks so much and we'll catch you next month take care if you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support there are a few things you can do head on over to apple podcast and leave a positive five-star review you can follow me on twitter at shop addiction Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.